Okay, so we left off. We had just finished the cutter and we'd gotten it to a nice low profile. Now we're going to see how simple we can make our butcher code, right? Because we have all these, these functions here in butcher. And I think, in all honesty, we're just using a 90 degree block. So we can probably simplify. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the animal head code and we're just going to comment that out. And then we're going to try and make an approximation of how the butcher functions. And just to clarify, right, when we're doing this, the butcher that we're using generally only produces a 90 degree angle. So we just want to check and see what a 90 degree angle looks like. So there's a 90 degree angle, right? And so we just want to make something comparable to that. So we're going to make a new piece of code, right? We're going to write a module. And we're going to call it butcher. And we're going to pass it some information, but we don't know what information yet. I think we're going to start off with a cube. And to make the math easier, this cube is going to be just... Um, <laughs> it's going to be center equals false. So we're going to go the width and um, the thickness. And the length, in case for some reason. In fact, let's do this more coherently. We'll do the length and then the thickness. And that just gives us um, a couple of axes to play with. Width, length, and thickness. And we're probably going to adjust the angle, so we're going to pass one more variable here called the angle. And that's going to be the angle of approach, not this 90 degree angle that we have. So from there, we can write butcher. And then just pass it some information. And we know that our chisel width is usually 15. Um, our length is going to be significantly less than that maybe um, 10 and our thickness let's just go with 5 and we're trying to get a 45 degree angle here to match what we have in the image so let's just see what we get and remember when you do this um, you're gonna have to make this ghosted and I have a parser issue, and it doesn't like that I put a square bracket here. There we go. All right, so since we haven't told it anything about where it is, it just starts the origin and works out, um, which is good because that means that this edge right here will always be our contact edge. Uh, it's going to be the vertex that's doing all the cutting. So a couple of things we need to do is get this uh, in some sort of location that makes sense to us using it as a tool. So we're trying to move in the x-axis, right? So theoretically, <laughs> that should be width over 2. And of course, we need to go backwards width over 2. There we go. So now we're at uh, our location, which we want, which is good. And all we need to do at this point is determine uh, how we're going to do our angle. So we're going to just put in a rotate function, spelled correctly, of course. And we need to rotate it in an angle, and um, maybe it's in the y-axis. If not, we'll find out pretty quick. That's a definite no. Is it in the x-axis? There we go. Let's put this zero back just for posterity's sake. So now we're rotated at a 45 degree angle, and that's close to what the butcher's doing. Um, the fact that this other butcher isn't matching makes me think either the code is off or um, something else has occurred in the process where we did these difference functions. But for all intents and purposes, this would be sufficient. Generally, I want to be butchering with this edge um, and not this wide edge. So you can either switch your length and thickness or you can change 
your angle to a negative. But the problem with doing that each time is as you mirror the objects, you start to lose your orientation. So I'm just going to switch thickness and length. Like so. And that'll cut the way I imagine the tool will cut, but it's really arbitrary and subjective, right? So we're going to stick with what we've got. And we're going to try passing this new butcher here with these new variables, right? 15, 10, 5, and 45 here. So now let's take a look at what we've got. There's our animal head. And somewhere in here we've been doing a butchering step. Let's figure out where that lives. There it is. On one side, right? And then we're going to compare it to our other butcher. And that's pretty close. So you can see that uh, the way you do the pushing, um, this section here on the edge of the butcher actually does cut away a large part of the mouth, which is why I would end up um, switching the variables as they're being passed so that it's a little more coherent um, for the process. So I would put length here and thickness. Here. Oops, and length. My apologies. And then when we go to render here, you can see that it's still got some clearance. Right? But that's just depending on how you see the butcher working. And at a 45 degree angle, you know it doesn't make a difference. Okay? So if we decide we want to do something a little more shallow, like we have over here, we can just go into the butcher itself, and just adjust our angle to what seems appropriate to us. So that's the 60 degree angle, and we're satisfied with that. So now all we have to do is carry all that information over to the remainder, 60, 5, 10, and here we go, 5, 10, and that should really give us something with the reasonable render time. And you can see that during that process, right, um, here, we affected the front lip. So there's something to be done there uh, in terms of how we pass information. Maybe we want our butcher to be significantly thinner. Um, right now it's length plus two for width, and that's fine, but maybe this number should be closer to 4, or more likely, maybe this number should be closer to 3. So at this point, we can now adjust where our um, design hits the lower, lower line. And this is one of the cool parts, because when you do that, you end up cutting two lips, where you can make a tooth set here, across this region, and you can make a lower lip here, across that region. So we're going to take it down to two. So we're only affecting what we what we want for that upper tooth line. Okay. And we're just going to see if there's any additional cutting that's occurring. So even at that angle, we could go shallower and even thinner. So we'll take that down to one. One millimeter seems a little shy. The angle seems a little steep. All of a sudden we can go close to 90. Right, 80 might be good. So now you can really cut in your details and figure out how to clean up the material with the least amount of work. Right. So we've got our nice teeth started here. Let's get that on center again. And so I like what we've got here. So I'm actually going to go through and pass that information through to the other sides. 
and we're going to take a look at the render to make sure it's behaving the way we want. There we go. So we've got total clearance, and we could shorten this significantly. It doesn't need to be 10. It just gives us a good idea of where our object is. So you could take this down to something really silly, like 3, and you would still have the effect you wanted. Okay? And this is going to make our rendering time so much faster, right? Because we know that we don't have that many objects doing things. There we are. And you see we've gone down from like 708 elements to 22 elements. Right? And that tells us that we can process this object really quickly. So that's what you need to know. And we're going to save this. That's Animal Head 6.